Okay, so in part 11 of our tutorial series, we're going to uh, develop the functionality to automatically load and save student and course data to file uh, when the application starts up automatically and when the application exits. Okay, so uh, for example, I'm running the application now and I can display students and there's all the students there loaded from file. Okay, don't need to click the test data button anymore. Okay, so stay tuned and let's get going. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the code to save a student to file and load a student from file. Okay, now that we've done all the groundwork, I'm assuming you've watched the other videos on File.io Basics and the preparation videos and all that sort of thing to get where we are. So you've worked through all the videos and written the code yourself so you understand what's going on. We're now going to write the code in here. Okay, now it would be nice to have an array class or, or several array classes, for example, a course array list class and a student array list class and have all the methods to deal with this sort of thing inside those classes but we haven't got there yet um, and I'm just going to stick to the class we've got rather than add more files okay so we'll put it in the controller for now but in a future video we're going to be re we're going to be reorganizing our code or it would be a good idea to think about reorganizing our code into into uh, maybe generic classes a generic array list class for an array list of students courses whatever okay so that's the way you should be thinking and heading in the long term. But uh, for this video, we're just going to add the code into um, for courses into the into the add controller. And why am I adding it to the add controller? Because that's where the array list lives. Okay, that's where the array list lives for all our course data. Uh, I could add it into another in, into any of these other classes uh, because this is this is static and uh, and it's part it's part of the package. So any of these other classes can access our course array list as well. But I'm just keeping the the code where the where the code is. Okay, so the course code in the course controller, or, or if it's to do with a course, in the course class, and so on. Okay, so let's write the code now to, to, to save and, and load that. So uh, it's going to be a public method, so we need to call it in other classes. We're going to call it from our entry points and exit points of our application, as we talked about in prior videos. It's going to be a void app. Uh, I'm not going to worry about uh, returning a Boolean or, or an integer if it's successful or not at this stage. Uh, it's got to be a static method so that we can call it without creating an instance of this class. Okay, and it's, we're dealing with instance data. This is all, sorry, static data. This is all static data, the array list. So we can, we can use a static method to access that. And I'm gonna call it save, save to file. Um, well, why not save course to file? Save courses to file, okay. And I could, I could pass in a file name if I wanted to, but I'll, I'll make that so it's a static constant at the top of the class, okay. So let's get going. So what we want to do now is loop through our array list. Course array list. Uh, so for course C, well I'll use a for each loop. I could use this, you could use a counter control loops, much the same thing. For each course C in our array list, what we want to do is write them out to file. Okay. So for that I need a formatter, just like we did in prior videos. Formatter out file equals new formatter. And in here I'm going to put the file name, which I haven't decided on yet. Uh, I might put it at the top of the class. I like putting things like this at the top of my class as a static constants. Uh, it can be public, it doesn't matter, it's a constant. Static final string file name equals courses dot text. That'll be the file name where the course is stored. Let's refer to it as file name in our in our code here. So it's going to save to that file name. I want to put that in a try with resources. See prior videos. We talked a lot about try with resources. Okay, and I'll put the for loop in there to, to output the code or save the output the data. We don't need to worry about don't need to worry about saving the file or, or sorry don't worry about closing the file because Try of the resources takes care of that for us. I'll put a catch in and I'll just catch the exception. And we could display a dialogue here or just output to the console screen or both. I'm just gonna output to the console screen for now. Ideally you'd output to the to, to a dialogue as well to, to tell the user something's gone wrong. Print line error file could not be saved. And I'll tell the user what, or I'll tell the console screen what file it was. It'll be that file there, file name. And a semicolon. Okay. 
So and uh, so in here we want to we want to do an import for file formatter. So we'll click on that and go add Java Util formatter. So we've got the, the formatter included. That's all looking good. And now what we want to do is use out file dot format, and we want to output our core starter to file. So inside quotes here, semicolon. Inside quotes here, I could I could go c dot uh, get code and plus a new line and then plus plus c dot get name. So I'm saving the course code and then the course name, one field per line. Okay, so I could do that sort of thing if I wanted to. Or I could shorten the code a little bit, it's only a little bit of a shortened code. Let's make our course class give us the data in the format we want. Okay, so we've got the two string method here. Let's give us another two string. And we can call it whatever we like, we're not because we're not overriding a method this time. I want to call it uh, I want to call it two string with line break. So let's call it whatever we like, we're not we're not overriding a superclass method here. And it's gonna be code. Oops, code plus slash n plus name plus slash n. Oops, I keep hitting down key, sorry. Okay, so that's that's what that's gonna return. Two string with line breaks, just gonna return code plus slash n plus name plus slash n. So it's returning the data in the format we want it to write it out to file. Okay, just say just calling multiple methods, we can just call one method. It's not much of a saving with two fields, but later on when we get onto students or other classes which might have dozens of fields, this could save us a lot of code in our in our other methods. Okay, so now instead of all that, we just go C dot two string with line breaks. Okay, so it saves us that amount of code. And that looks pretty complete to me. Okay, so we've got a formatter being created in the try with resources block section. It's opening the file name that it's set to at the top of the class, outputting every course in our ArrayList to file with one field per line. And if, if there's an error, we had a console message. Um, then that's that's enough for now, okay? Um, ideally, if this is a real application, you'd also tell the user that you, the, the file I/O couldn't be read, file couldn't be read or something like that. You'd alert the user. If it's going to the console screen in a GUI, the user won't see the, the console screen because there's a no console screen when you're running an app outside of NetBeans, okay? If it's if it's a if it's a GUI app, uh, unless you run it with a special Java command. Anyway, we're not getting into that. Okay, that's our save save courses to file. Let's do a load courses from file. Load courses from file. Again, it's a public static void method. Load courses from file. We use a scanner. Remember, we use scanner scanner in file equals new scanner and we go in here new file reader we're wrapping us a, a file reader into a scanner so that we can use scanner commands to read the file and closing quote again closing brackets again need to do an import for scanner import for scanner need to do an import for file reader import for file reader and in here we're not we're not living through our array list anymore because we don't know how many bits of data are coming in from the file so we need to loop through while in file dot has next is equal to true. While there's more data in the file, while in file dot has next equals true, we'll keep loading data from the file. Okay. And it's in file dot next will give us the next bit of data. Okay. And what we want to do is read enough data in. We're going to assume the file is not corrupted and just proceed on that basis. So what do we need to create a course? In other words, what do we need to fire off the constructor? Let's have a look at that. Uh, and the constructor's up the top here. So we need a, in our course code, sorry, I clicked on it, but it didn't go across. Um, so we need a code, course code and a course name. We need two bits of data. Okay, two bits of data. Okay, so let's read that course code and course name in. It's one field per line, remember? and we'll feed it through to our course constructor. Um, okay, and the code's gonna be a lot like this. 
In fact, and in fact, let's let's grab this code. <laughs> okay, and um, we've got the try catch here already, so we'll just we'll just grab uh, this part and uh, pop it down here with our file load. Okay, and um, so I'll make it so our so we've got two catches going on. Okay, so if, if an exception occurs, it's a file error. If it's a course exception, then we've got a, an error in our data that's coming in. Course code's blank, course name's blank, something like that. Okay, we've got a bad file data coming in. Okay, and so we want, what we want to do now is create, create a course. Um, course.add, and, and the first bit of data coming in is going to be the course code, and the next bit of data coming in is the course name. Okay, so course code, course name, in file.next, in file.next, one field per line, we're just reading the data in from file, one field per line, and feeding it into the course constructor, and then adding that course into the array list. And then at the end, if you want to display a success message, you can. Um, I don't think I need to, it's just going to annoy the user at this stage. But what I will do is grab that code and display an error message up here if the file load fails. Um, so I'm going to grab that message here and put it in. Okay, so J option pane show show message dialog. I want to show that same error that we were showing up here when the file couldn't be loaded. So, sorry, it couldn't be saved. And show that same message. J option pane J show message dialog. Or we could use the new alerts that are built into JavaFX more appropriate. I don't mind using the swing dialog, so they look quite nice. And same down here, we're going to show an error. Error file cannot be loaded. So let's change that loaded. Okay, so we've got it going out to the console screen and to a dialog. Again, not a bad thing to do. Um, because if someone's watching the console screen, if that's all getting written out to a log file, Admin operators can see the log file later. If this is a real application, they can see the log file, go through the log file, scan for errors, and see that error is occurring, and see what's going on. Then I could maybe talk to people and find out what's going on with the files. So, um, yeah. And so show a dialog so the user knows, right to the console screen, so that if the, if the files are logged, if the, log, if the console screen output's logged, then some sort of operator can get hold of it and see the errors occurring as well, and fix it. Not a bad way to go. And um, if we get a bad course, we're going to raise an exception, and we're creating the course here. We don't want that dialogue. We'll get rid of that or leave it in there. It doesn't matter. I've commented it out. And that's basically it. Okay. So we're creating a scanner object, wrapping it around a file reader, using the next command to read in the next, next line of data, and using has next to work out whether there is more data to read in. And, um, and that's it. We don't have to worry about closing the file because try with resources takes care of that for us, as we've seen in prior videos. Okay, course exception. Ah, okay, so here, here Java's complaining about course exceptions already been caught, but it hasn't. Okay, and the reason Java's saying that is that exception is the parent of runtime exception, which is the parent of course exception. Remember where we fit, the, fit course exception into the hierarchy? So we need to do a catch on that first. Okay. So if we get if we get bad course data coming in from file, we'll get an error message saying um, course name cannot be blank or something like that. Okay, and then the file will ex will, will stop loading, and um, I, I should probably display a, an error there as well saying uh, do we want to do we want to display two dialogues? Um, I think that'll be enough for now. Okay, um, uh, we might as well put that other dialogue in there as well. If 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 if, 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 if we've got bad data, we will say file could be loaded as well to the user, just so they know something really bad's going on. Two dialogues in a row I don't like, but it's, it should be very rare this happens. <laughs> okay, so that's good enough for what we're doing. Okay, so that's a file load, uh, the, the 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 course the course save and the, and the course load, and we want we want the saved courses to file to occur in our i exitable. Okay. So down here where we said save to file, we want to run that save courses to file method. We need to tell Java where it lives, and it lives in our add controller, which like I said, isn't the best place to put it, 
but it will do for what we're doing at this stage. Ideally, I'd, like I said earlier, I'd like to see an array list class for courses, an array list class for students added into this structure, an array list course for enrolments, or maybe make generic versions of those so that they could handle any, any type of data. That's something you need to think about. Uh, and so it's um, the class name dot method name. Okay, so course add controller dot save courses to file. We're exiting, we're exiting the program, it's time to save the data. Let's go across to our uh, student admin app. This is the main entry point as we saw in a prior video. And we're gonna put the data to load the files here. So we need to go load courses from file. Okay, so now we get the courses being loaded and saved to file. We can now run our app. Okay, so the first time we, we try and run the app, we're getting the error saying that file cannot be loaded. Okay, so we, we'll fix that in a second, don't worry. That's okay. And um, if we add the test data and exit. Okay, now we go back to our folder where the, file, where the files are and load the courses file and you'll see there's a course code and course name, course code, course name, course code, course name. Okay, so all the data is being saved okay. Okay, and if we run the app again, it, it's running fine. And we haven't added test data now, so let's display courses. And, ooh, object-oriented programming. Okay, so we've used the wrong command here, haven't we? We should have, shouldn't have used next. Next means next word of data. In other words, up until the next white space, we should have used next um, next line. Okay. So uh, in our in our load method, in our load, that should have been next line. Next line. So in other words, give me the next line of data up until whatever. Okay. So don't just ne next on its own just gives you the next word of data until the next space or tab. Okay, now let's try it. And we'll display all courses. We haven't added test data. Okay, so we'll display all courses. <laughs> and that's because... <laughs> okay. So we need to we need to erase our file because it was, it was a bit mangled. See, our file's been mangled. So let's just go back again and delete that and start from scratch again. Okay, so this is just part of the teething problems when you're saving files. You need to work through the bugs, don't you? File cannot be loaded again. Let's add some test data. Exit. Okay. And check the file format. It should be course course code, course name. Okay. So what we're doing before is we're reading, reading that as uh, a, that is a course code, that is a course name, that is a next course code, that is a next course name, because we're reading the next, not the next line. Okay. Should be should be all fixed now. So let's run again. And uh, we're not running, we're not clicking the test data button. Let's just display all courses and everything's working great. Okay. And we'll go back to our courses file and open it again. And it's saved in exactly the same way it was before. So now that we put the next line in there for reading the data in, the next line means all of the stuff on that line. Okay. Then, uh, then we're good to go. Everything's working great. Okay. So there's a bunch of ways to fix the file not found error happening if the file hasn't, doesn't exist and you're creating it for the first time. Looking through the file reader help here, um, I can see that um, if the file doesn't exist, it throws a file not found exception. Okay, so why don't we just catch that and do nothing with it. If the, if the file doesn't exist, we won't treat that as an error. Okay, let's do that. So load courses from file. We've got the course exception and we'll have the file not found exception catch file not found exception error and if it fails we won't do anything do nothing file does not yet exist so this is fine it's going to be created when we exit the program and we need to do an import for that java io file not found all good so let's Okay, let's go to delete the course file. There it is. So let's delete that so we're starting with a clean slate again. Oh, we should have exited first. Sorry, exit. Okay. Uh, delete the course file again. <laughs> and then we'll compile and run. And we shouldn't get the error anymore. It should just fail silently. Beautiful.
Okay, so that's the easiest way to fix the, the file not found exception. Um, let's have a look and display courses. There's nothing there, no courses. Let's add some test data. Let's display courses. They're there. Let's exit. Okay, and let's run again. And we won't, we won't press the test data button again. We'll just display courses and everything's there. Beautiful. Okay, so that's working fine. Okay, so we've got the, we've got the load and save for courses done. Uh, let's now apply the same strategy to students. Okay, so we'll start off with, let's, uh, let's copy our code. <laughs> so we'll grab this code here for the, for the load courses and the save courses. We'll grab those two bits of two methods and we'll paste them into our student add controller. Student display student add controller, that one there. Okay, because that's where our student array list lives. Again, we can put it in any of those files because this is open, this opens open access to the package, any, anything in the package, which is all of these files. We'll just keep it, keep this, keep the student uh, load and save where the array list is cleared for now. Okay, so let's add those. Yep, NetBeans, thank you. We'll add those in. We're going to now, uh, oops, we're now going to load save students to file and load students from file. Okay, so just changing the class, the method names, and um, let's just move that over a bit. And it's no longer for each course, it's for each student S, not students, student S in our students array list. Okay, and it's S dot two string with line break. S dot two string with line break. We're still gonna add that method. We haven't added that to our student class yet. Um, file cannot be saved, file can be saved, they're still fine. Load students in file, yep, still gonna be file name. We need to put file name at the top for our student file. In folder has next we're creating a student. Student S equals new student. And how many bits of data does our student constructor need? Let's just go back and refresh our memory. So our student constructor needs three bits of data. It needs a name, a phone, and an email address. Name, phone, email address. Okay, so it's going to be next line, comma, next line, comma, next line. We're reading three bits of data. I'll put that on next line so you can see it. So we're reading one, two, three bits of three lines worth of data to create a student. And then we're adding them to the students array list. Students array list dot add S. S is our student that we're working through. Student S, student S. New student, not students, student. Okay. And uh, we're not we're not getting uh, course exceptions. We're getting student exception. Student exception. Okay. And file cannot be loaded. File does not exist. Yep. Do nothing. File cannot be loaded. They're all fine. Okay. So let's just do a quick recheck. Load students some file. We're uh, looping, looping through, uh, creating a student from the next line of data. Next line of data. Next line. So the three next lines of data create one student, and we're create, adding them to the array list. And, uh, and down here, um, up here with the, with the save students to file, we're leaving through all students in the array list. For each student S in the array list, we're uh, outputting them to file and we're going to need that line break method there. So let's go add that to our student class, that two string with line break. Student class, so we're going to add it right down near the end. I just added it, I usually add it just above my original two string. So it's public string, two string with line break. We've got no override for this one because it's not a parent method that we're overriding. So it's going to be... Ah, now. We're not going to save the student ID. Okay. Because they're auto-allocated. Or do you want to save the student ID? This is something you need to think about as well. If we're going to give the user the, the option later to delete students, then we might have student 1000, 1001, 1005. There might be a gap. So when we load those students back from file, we don't want them to have 1000, 1001, 1000, 2003. Like there's no gaps because we've changed the student ID. Okay, so maybe we do want to change the student ID, save the student ID to file. And also maybe we want to create a constructor which doesn't auto allocate the student ID. See what I mean? Okay, so we're thinking ahead to when we're adding features into the program. If, we, if we're giving the user the option ever to delete a student, which is perfectly fair, 
a student and a student joins the university and then leaves, we want the option to delete a student. Okay, so I think I might add another constructor here that takes in student ID, name, phone, email, and doesn't auto allocate the ID, it allocates the ID to the one that's passed in. So let's do that. So we're thinking, thinking about the bigger picture here while we, while we work on this sort of stuff. Okay, so we've got to think about what, so we want another constructor, another parameterized constructor, and it's going to take in an int, which is a student ID. Okay, and um, it's it's going to uh, it's going to do the validations again, and uh, it's going to do this sort of thing again, and also set the ID, but it's not going to do that. It's going to use the ID that's passed in. So it's going to be almost the same code, but just without allocating the ID and incrementing the last used one. So, what do we think we want to do? Do we want to? Um, I think what we'll do is we'll move all this code because we don't want to repeat it. We don't have th this code repeated everywhere, so we'll move that into the into the extra into the new constructor up, up above, the one that takes the ID. We'll move this code here into the one that takes the ID, and we'll say this dot ID equals ID, or this dot student ID equals student ID. Okay, so now. We, we, we've got one that takes student ID as well, and we're allocating the ID to the one that's passed in. So what we could do down here, instead of saying student ID equals, we could say um, this, and we'll pass in last year's student ID, and, and name, and phone. So we make, we're going to make use of that constructor above the new one we've just added. So we're passing in the bits of data that we know. We're not going to add. We're not going to say student ID equals anymore because we're passing the ID across, and we want to add one to it after we come back. So if a thousand's the last used, used one, that's the one we're going to allocate to the student, and then we'll add one to the last used. Okay. So we're using the, the new constructor we just built up here. Uh, for, the, for the one where we create a student with nothing, that will still call this constructor because it takes in three strings. That just passes three strings, okay. But if we pass an ID as well, we're passing, we're using this constructor, okay. So a little bit of plumbing and things to work out there when we're loading from file. We don't want to have student IDs 1004 one one run of the program, and then suddenly they're 1003 or 1002 the next run. That could cause all sorts of havoc in our system if student IDs relied on in other places, okay. Don't want student IDs changing. Once they've been allocated to a student, we want them staying staying the same for that student. No matter how many loads or saves of the file happen, how many deletions occur, student ID should not change for a student. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, if we could, we could check student ID. If student ID is less than zero, we could throw an exception. Um, yeah, we could do that. But um, yeah, we might as well. It's, it's not a bad thing to do. Else, if student ID is less than zero, we could throw a UE student exception. Uh, student ID. ID cannot be less than zero. Okay, so we're checking that as well now. And if we're, in fact, we do have a starting ID up here. Um, no, we won't get into that. No, we won't get into that. Okay, so just check it's less than zero for now. That'll do. Uh, I've got an exception coming up. What's that error coming up there? Error passing file needs to be. Oh, yep. So we need to return something here with our two-string. So we need to return student ID because we're saving that to file. We decided we're going to save student IDs to file ID plus a new line plus name plus a new line plus phone plus an email and plus a new line. Okay. So that's the data we're saving to file. Student ID on one line, then the name on another line, then the phone on another line, then the email on another line. Beautiful. So now we've got our two string with line breaks there, which makes this happy. Uh, the last thing we need to do is now provide a file, a file name. So up here in our courses, not that, the courses add, we had a, a static field at the top there for file name. Let's create another one in student, in student add controller. So it's going to be uh, file name, which is 
and it, we'll call it students. And it's quite okay to have the same name as the other one. That's the one in the courses add controller because we're different classes. So this, the scope's fine. They're not, they're not overlapping scope. Okay. I think that should work for our students now. Let's do it, give it a try. Compile. And run. Okay, so no error messages came out. Let's have a look at our code. There's no students being saved yet. So if we exit the app, no student file was created. Okay, let's run it again. Oh, <laughs> no student file was created because we haven't called the methods yet. Duh. Okay, so the save one, the save students, that goes in our I exitable, remember? Okay, so after the courses are saved, we want the students to be saved, and that's the students add controller to locate the method, students add controller dot save students to file. And for the load one, we want to put that in the, uh, in the load one, we want to put that in the, the, ex, the entry point for the application, which is student admin app. Okay, and that's load students from file. Okay, now it should work. Okay, let's see if the file's been created. Nope. And exit. Students, there's a, there's a file. I hadn't created any students, so it's blank. That's fine. But no errors, that's good. Uh, let's run it again, and we'll add some test data this time. Uh, although, if we add test data, we're going to add to our courses as well. <laughs> Actually, what I might do is exit and add the test data once. So I'll delete the courses, delete the students, and then I'm not doubling up on the courses by clicking the Add Test Data button twice for courses. So I've already clicked it once before the last save, before the last load. Okay, so let's run that again, and we'll go Add Test Data, Display Students, they're all there, Display Courses, they're all there, and Exit. Okay, and now we've got the course file, beautiful. The students file, beautiful. So student ID, student name, student phone number, student email, student ID, student name, student phone number, student email. So it's the same four fields, one field per line. Okay, looking good so far. So um, that's, that's, that's it. I think, that, I think that's enough for this video. So we've got um, save courses and load courses and save students and load students done. And everything's working great. It's automatically loading when the application starts and automatically um, saving when the ex application leaves. Oh, we've got an email not valid here. <gasps> oh, display all students. Wow, what's going on here? Okay, I think I've, I think I've loaded the data in the wrong order, maybe. Okay, let's have a, let's have a check of what our data's doing. So let's go back and look at that. So that's our data. Let's have a look at the order we're loading it in and processing it in. So we're looking now at our um, student add. And we're going down to file, sorry, student add. And uh, down here to where we... So we're loading the student... Ah, righto. So we're loading the student ID, the student name, the student phone number, and the student email address. We should be calling the constructor that takes the four pieces of data, not the three pieces of data. This is, this is just the three pieces of data. Okay, so let's add another next line in here. So now we're getting the four bits of data. So look at our student. There's our constructor that takes four bits of data and it's public. And we're trying to use that here and we're getting an error file.next line, new student. Oh, okay, because the data coming in from file is a string. Next line means string. So what we want here is next int. Okay, next int. So reading next int from file. Ah, now the problem when we do that is we've got a, we've got a dirty buffer. We've still got the carriage return line feed hanging around there in the file, okay? So maybe we want to do read. Maybe we do want to read it in from as next line, but maybe we want to do an integer dot p. 
pass int. It's making it a bit ugly. So we want to convert that to an integer as we load it in. So we put an integer.pass int on that first field because we're reading it in as a string and then we're converting it to an integer. Rather than use the next int, which would leave the buffer dirty. We saw that the carriage return hanging around in the buffer that uh, that next int hadn't consumed. That's probably the simplest way. Okay, so compile again. Everything's looking good. Let's go back to add files, delete that and delete the courses. Okay, delete those two files. Let's run our app. We'll add the test data. Display, students are there. Courses there, let's exit. Okay, and let's run again. No errors. Display students, yes. Display courses, yes. And let's have a look at our files. Okay, so there's our files, courses. Looks nice, and students. Yep, let's reload it, looks beautiful. Okay, so everything's great. And there's one last thing I need to do, and that's update our version number to, to part 11. Part 11. Um, so we're going to the, the main the main menu and control S to save it and run our app. And there we go, version 11. Okay. Okay, so this one one small issue I've thought about when we when we run the app, so we've got no, no files there to start with. Okay, so no course, no student file there to start with. And we go add test data, which adds our three courses or four course student, three or four courses, three or four students, and exit. Okay, so now our files are there. We've got courses and students. That's all looking great. Okay, 1,000, 1,001, 1,002 for our students. Let's now run the app again and add a student. So let's, I'll, yep, there we go. Run the app. And we'll add another student. Add a student. I'll add Hank and whatever phone number and Hank at mail. Okay, that'll do. So we'll add one more student. What ID were they allocated? It should have been 1004. Okay, so we've got three, more, three, three prior students. It should have been 1004. What were they allocated? And they were allocated 1000. Okay, so our load, when, we, when we're allocating the ID from IDs that come in from file, we should be making sure that our last used ID is greater than the one that's coming in from file. Okay, so if 1040 comes in from file, we should make sure our last used ID is 1041, one bigger than the one that's coming from file. Okay, so let's add that processing in just to make sure we're, we're not reusing IDs or doing anything like that. Okay, so when the ID is allocated, if if student ID is is greater than the last used ID, which is our static field up here, okay, then we say last used ID equals student ID plus one. So if, if the student ID coming in from files 1050, we want last used ID to be to 1051 so that we're allocating that to the next student. Okay, it doesn't matter if there's gaps in student IDs, but it does matter if the same student ID has been reused for other students, that could cause havoc in our system later on. Okay, so let's give that a try. Let's display all students. Hank's still a thousand. Let's let's uh, let's let's delete the files again. Students and courses, let's delete those. And we'll run our app. Start from fresh. Add the test data. Display students. Yep. And display courses. Yep, that's fine. And let's add a student. And it's going to be Hank. Whatever phone number. Whatever email address. Doesn't really matter. Let's add them. And now return to the main menu and display students. And we'll see Hank's got 1003. So the last used ID has been updated properly. Uh, let's add another student just to make really sure. Um, Pedro. Any phone number. Pedro at mail.com, whatever, doesn't matter. Add a student, return, display students. He's 1004, so that's great. And we'll um, now check the files as well. So we'll load from the file again and make sure everything's still fine. Display students, yep. Okay, so we fixed that problem. So we had to just add these two lines of code into our student constructor that took the student ID as well 
to make sure we were setting the last year's student ID to something sensible. We weren't just defaulting it to a thousand every time, but we're using defaulting it to one bigger than the one to the data that was coming in from file. Okay, so if 10,099 was used, we'd allocate the last year's ID to 10,099 plus one. So the next student that gets the ID gets a unique number. Okay, that should, that should be fine for that. I uh, hope that was useful. Um, so that's enough for this video. Uh, in the next part, I'll show you how to load in enrollments. Okay, so for enrollments, we're going to create a student and a, and uh, we'll find out what student was associated with a particular enrollment and find out what courses and save for the bigger enrollment. And what do we save and load? Do we save, for each enrollment, do we save all the data for a student or just the ID? And when we load it back in again, do we load all the data for a student as well? And then in this case, the student data exists in two files, which is crazy. Or do we just load the ID and try and find the student? Okay, so the things we're going to be talking about in the next video. So I hope this is useful. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.